In a previous video, which I've linked here and below, I showed you how to remotely control a Windows device from a Mac and also how to control a Mac from another Mac or how to control a Mac from a Windows computer using VNC. So I showed you how to install VNC on a Windows computer. I showed you how to set up screen sharing on a Mac. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to use VNC to control an Ubuntu computer. Okay, so in this example, I'm running Ubuntu version 20.04 LTS. IP address of this device is 192.168.170. If I try and connect to that Ubuntu server using VNC or screen sharing, that connection fails. I'm not able to connect to this Ubuntu server because I haven't installed VNC on the Ubuntu PC or Ubuntu server. Now there are quite a few steps to get VNC up and running on an Ubuntu computer. I've put the commands below this video and a link to a website that I found really useful. So if you simply wanna reference the commands, look below this video or refer to the website that I've listed. Okay, first thing we need to do is sudo apt get update to update our references. Okay, so that's been done. Next step is sudo apt get install light dm. Say yes to install it. This basically changes the display manager to light DM. So I'm gonna specify that as my default display manager. Okay, so once that's done, reboot. Okay, log back in again. Okay, so the display has changed a bit. I'm gonna open up a terminal. Now install X11VNC. Okay, so now let's configure a service. So I'm gonna configure the X11VNC service and I'm gonna paste this information in. Change the password to the relevant password that you wanna use. You can refer to the link below if you wanna know the details of all of these options. But basically we're going to start this service after other services have started. We're gonna restart if there's a failure. We're gonna start the service before the process reaches multi-user target. It's gonna run as a child process and it's gonna run forever, but this is the most important part. Set your password to the password that you want. Control X to exit nano, yes to save. We're gonna restart the services and then we want to enable the X11 VNC service. And then we wanna start it. We can check if that service is enabled by looking at its status. So system CTL status. We can see that the VNC desktop is running on port 5901. Now one issue you may encounter is the automatic locking of the screen. So under settings, privacy, screen lock. Disable these options if necessary. Sometimes if the screen locks, your VNC session won't work. So you might need to disable this. That obviously may pose a security risk, so just be aware of doing that. You need to make sure that you log off your computer when you finish your session. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is do a reboot. Okay, so I won't log into the server. On my Mac, I'm going to try and connect to the server on port 5900. I'm asked to put in my password, which is password in this example, and notice I can now remotely control this Ubuntu server from my Mac. So, use the password to log in. Here's the virtual machine running within VMware Fusion, but here I'm controlling that virtual machine from the screen sharing application. So I'll move this up here so that you can see that. I'm running the screen sharing application on my Mac 
and controlling Ubuntu. What I'll do now is connect to my Windows laptop and from the Windows laptop, I'm going to try and control that Ubuntu server using tight VNC. I'll close the session on my Mac. And notice I'm controlling the Ubuntu computer from my Windows laptop. I'm actually jumping from one computer to another. I'm controlling the Windows laptop from my Mac using VNC, and then I'm using VNC on the Mac to control the Ubuntu virtual machine. But from my Windows computer, I can type commands and do things on the Ubuntu virtual machine. Okay, so in this video, I showed you how to install VNC on a Ubuntu computer and then remotely control it from a Mac and from a Windows computer. Please be careful with VNC. Don't try and use it across an internet connection unless you're encrypting that session across SSH. This kind of setup may be okay for your home network, but be careful, VNC can be cracked. You should be encrypting everything, if possible, through SSH. But if you need a quick way to manage devices, VNC is a great way to do it. I'm David Bombal, wanna wish you all the very best. Sweet.